24 minutes in the books in Phoenix and the Suns leading the Oklahoma City Thunder 53 to 48. Sprint halftime reporting from Studio J in Atlanta. Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith and Charles Barkley. We're going to forego the normal uh, analysis of the first half of this game and talk about the passing of Earl Lloyd, uh, a true pioneer in the NBA, the first African-American player in the NBA in 1950 uh, as he played uh, with the Washington Capitals, later won a, uh, an NBA championship with the Syracuse Nats, uh, later coached briefly the Detroit Pistons in the early 70s, and a Hall of Famer in 2003. And you heard Reggie Miller talk about it in the first half. You, talk, you heard Kevin Harlan and David Aldridge talk about him coming up with Chuck Cooper and Nat Sweetwater Clifton in that same year. And just so happened that his game was scheduled first. And by virtue of the schedule, uh, Earl Lloyd became the first African-American player in the NBA. Um, but he's... You know, baseball had Jackie Robinson, and, and the NBA had those three, and, and, and er, certainly Earl Lloyd, the first to, to put the uniform on and play in a game. Yeah, I got a chance to meet Mr. Lloyd, and, you know, one of my heroes is Joe Morgan, uh, the baseball player, and he told me he just, he just wanted to meet Jackie Robinson one time, just say thank you. And I've always used that anytime I met one of the great black men who played in the league and made it popular for us to, I, I'm not even as it, it, it's better today, but I just really appreciate them, quote unquote, doing all the heavy lifting. So when I met Mr. Lloyd, I told uh, just thank you for everything. Every time I see Bill Russell, Spencer Haywood, you know, Tiny Archibald and Jojo White guys like that, I just tell them thank you because, you know, we can't even imagine the circumstances, not just trying to play basketball, but doing all the other civil rights movements that was going on, you know, where they stayed, where they ate and things like that. And you just got to admire those guys. So uh, thank you, Mr. Earl Lloyd. You know, I, I urge children to learn about the history of the game. Uh, I'll be the first to admit that when I started playing basketball, I thought the game was invented with Dr. J. Dr. J was my first guy watching the fish to save Pittsburgh. I thought he was at the beginning of the NBA, but, you know, as I learned about history, I learned about Spencer Haywood and, and, and Mr. Lloyd. And, you know, you can only say thank you. So, like, whenever I see the greats, you know, similar to what Chuck does at the All-Star game, I say thank you. Uh, I had the chance to meet the great George Mikan many, many times. And, you know, he asked me for my autograph one time. And I was like, uh, he's like, Shaq, you know who I am? He's like, yes, sir, I know who you are. And, you know, he passed away. I paid for his funeral. But, you know, the pioneers have definitely set the way. So I urge young children to really learn about the history of the NBA, about the game. It's a fabulous game. You know, I also got to hear, hear about him from uh, uh, Coach Sharman. You know, I made the statement uh, a long time ago that when I talk to certain legends, that helped me bring my game to the next level. So sitting there having conversation with uh, Bill Sharman, I know he was uh, uh, influential in Mr. Lloyd's career. He stuck up for him as a white guy. Yeah. And so, you know, I got to learn a little about him from Mr. Sharman. But, you know, whenever I see the grace, I just have to say thank you. Now, Earl Lloyd pointed that out, too. He uh, uh, Later in his, uh, uh, in his career, he talked about Bill Sharman's influence and making that transition uh, easier for him. What do you think, Jeff? I mean, you know, a great celebration of his life. Um, because he made it to the point where you don't even think about an African-American player. You don't say that. You say, oh, he's a great player. You never say, you never prerequisite with his color, his race, or anything else. And Chuck Cooper, along with Sweetwater Clifton, actually was a trio that actually came into the league together as three black uh, African-American players. And his game, like you said, Ernie, was first. And my very first feature when I was started here at Turner was with Earl Lloyd. Uh, he sent me out and talked about him, and I had got to interview him got to talk to him about being the first African-American basketball player. So my very first feature as a Turner person was with Earl Lloyd. So this was a very special moment for me. And, uh, you know, our condolences go to the uh, Lloyd family. But again, it's a celebration because he put it to the fact where they don't say an African-American player, a white player, they say he can play. Yeah. Earl Lloyd passes at the age of 86. We'll be back.
Sprint more data, more highlights. Game one of our double dip. LeBron James and the Cavs, 10 straight wins at home. Got Golden State, best record in the NBA in town. David Lee from Andre Iguodala. The LeBron James, I know he's saying that like there was no message sent, but there was a message sent. Yeah, this is a litmus test game because if you lose to a team that's a contender, you got to say, well, what do we need to do to become a contender, a better contender? So this was a litmus test game for Cleveland who had been struggling early in the year, and now they're on the road. Well, like I you said earlier, Kenny. I, I don't know. If, I don't think that was a litmus test, Kenny. I think LeBron, everybody's talking about Steph Curry, and James Harden, and Westbrook as MVP. I think he wants to say, like, you know, it still is my MVP. That's what I just said. I, well, I don't pay you any attention when you're talking. You ain't got to well, it's not you. still his MVP, because Kevin Durant has it right. TK, set it up. Right, Arnie. Charity boxing match. But, but he's got four of them. May 5th. May 5th. Right here, May 5th. I'll, I'll, hey, I got, I'll get the May 5th, uh, big gloves. Ooh, big gloves. Oh, big gloves. Okay, make it May 5th and 6th. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, big gloves. <laughs> You'll feel it on the 6th if I hit him on the 5th. Okay. <laughs> big gloves.